Hey, this is Daniel Norton. I'm here in my studio in New York City, and today we're going to make some headshots. So I have my friend Cadence coming. We've uh, worked together a bunch of times before. You guys have seen her in a bunch of other videos. And, uh, you know, she did a nice fresh headshot for 2021. So we're going to uh, shoot something really clean against white. And this is a good technique that we're going to use today that will work with a lot of different people. First, I just want to talk a little bit about kind of the idea of, of lens choice, right? We've talked about this a bunch in other videos, but here is one of those times where normally you're seeing me use the 24 to 70 lens. Here I'm going to embrace the 85. We talked about that in the video with Zoe about kind of being able to step back a bit uh, to get that compression with it, but still get a nice tight shot. So even though I'm in the studio and I know I said that I use a 50 a lot in the studio, for a classic headshot, I tend to go with an 85 millimeter. So headshots can be a great business for photographers. No matter where you are, there's going to be uh, various people that are going to need them from business people to actors to models, dancers. Everybody needs a headshot these days. With so much stuff being done online and people looking at your profiles first, everybody needs a nice clean headshot. And so far as lighting is concerned, I like to use a flash for headshots. And one of the reasons why I do that is because I find that headshots are one of those things that the best ones tend to be that moment in between where the person kind of lets loose or laughs or there's like a little thing that happens and flash is going to give you a lot more guarantee of freezing that action. As much as I love constant lights and we've talked about that in a lot of other, uh, you know, videos for specifically this kind of shot, especially if you're working with people that aren't professionals as far as having their headshot made, like not actors, unlike today, obviously, but you really want to make sure that every single frame is tack sharp and perfect, even if they're moving or laughing or turning. So flash can be really great for that. Okay, so for this, I'm going to approach it as kind of two lights, right? We're going to use our key light to shape the face and then a fill light to kind of bring in the shadows. And what that's going to do is going to allow us to change the effect of the lighting depending on who's in front of our lens, right? If we want more contrast, we want it to be punchier, we'll have less fill. And if we want, you know, uh, it to be more kind of smooth and even, then we're going to go with more fill. So I'm going to achieve that by using two modifiers. One is going to be a lantern from Shamira. That's going to be, it's basically a big ball. We're going to put it real close in, in the center to give nice even light across the whole face and it'll be punchy and light the face brighter than the rest of the scene. Then I'm going to take a Shamira frame, a four foot frame, and shoot a light through that pretty much directly behind the camera to fill in all the shadows. As far as the background goes, I may just let it kind of be white. I have a shiny white wall, so it might just kind of work out. Or if need be, I'll throw a couple of lights uh, just to kind of light the background up. Nothing fancy, just to kind of keep it clean. Okay, so I have Cadence here. And one of the questions I get a lot about when someone needs to get a headshot, they're like, what should I wear? What should I wear? This is it, right here. This shirt, you can find the link for it, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this, no, something simple, something that uh, reflects your personality. They used to be very strict. People would be like, don't wear this, don't wear that. You know, if it reflects your personality, it's fine. You should be updating these things all the time anyways, depending on what you're using them for. So, you know, if all of a sudden those, uh, I was gonna say bell-bottom pants, but they're probably not gonna see bell-bottom pants in the headshot. No. They might see them, I mean, who knows? But let's say bell-bottom shirts. If you're wearing a bell-bottom shirt and then that becomes not uh, popular, you just take another shot. So. I recommend usually people bring in a few uh, variations, a couple different things, something that reflects your personality, something simple, right? Once we've done that, we're gonna light it up nice and easy. The headshot is not about you being super fancy as a photographer and getting all creative. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's really about a simple shot to show what the person looks like, right? So we don't need to go super, super crazy. We're gonna need a white background, pretty simple. I have two Profoto B2s back there. They're just bouncing off the wall. I have a white wall just to bring it up. Not super, super bright. We've talked about that before. Just get a nice clean white behind her. As far as my key light, I'm using this lantern from Chimera. Can I spin it? Yep. And basically the lantern is great because it kind of throws light everywhere. And in my space, because I have white walls and white floor, it really works for me because I get this nice bouncy light. This by itself is actually just really great. Just to kind of uh, show you guys some options and just to make sure we're safe. I also have a second light set up as a fill light. This is gonna basically be another pro photo B1X, it's here and I'm gonna shoot it through a four foot silk. So this, that's just gonna give me what they call uh, on access fill. It's gonna basically be behind me. And you're probably gonna be like, well, isn't that gonna throw a shadow on her? Well, it, it would if I was using a bare head like this, it might, I should say. But when it hits the diffuser, which I'm gonna put in front of it, that will spread the light out and we won't get any shadow on her at all. It'll just kind of fill in nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna set the lights up. I'm gonna use a light meter this time. You can use TTL, there's lots of different ways to do this. Essentially, we're gonna get the background 
to be a little bit more than white because we want it to reflect back white. And we're gonna get our key light to be on exposure. So I'm gonna shoot around F8. So I'm gonna set this one around F8. And then we're gonna get our field light to be one stop-ish under that. So we'll do that. I have the uh, Sekonic meter here and I'll just set them up and go for it. Okay, so I have everything, the baseline of everything set. And like I say all the time, get ready to put a comment below that I'm wrong. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get your fingers ready. Okay, here we go. Like I say all the time, the meter is telling you where it believes scientifically the exposure is correct. That doesn't mean it's the right exposure. We need to take a shot, take a look. So I've got my uh, Nikon Z6 here, fitted with the 85, and I'm going to go ahead and take a quick shot and see where we're at. All right, there you go. There you go, Sakonic. Well played. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Again, we've got nice clean light on her. She looks good. You can see it shapes her face nicely. And we have a nice clean white background. So let me just quickly run through what each of these lights is doing. First, we'll start with just the background light. Again, this is just gonna give us basically a silhouette, right? As you might expect. Our fill light, this is gonna just be an underexposed flat light from the front. And then our key light is the lantern which is gonna give us the shape to the face and basically most of our exposure, see? So we can see here, this is actually very nice, very nice as it is, really pretty. And we get to it a little bit more contrasty when we compare it to the finished image that has the fill. If you thought, because remember things multiply, right? So if you thought that this exposure was better uh, versus uh, the top one, what you could do is turn both lights down a tiny bit. I'm in manual at this point, guys, not in TTL. So I'm turning both lights down a smidge. That's an official term, smidge. There we go. And that gives us kind of a more medium exposure. All right, there we go. You like your exposure medium? I like my exposure medium. All right, once we have this, we can just shoot a few. Easy as that. Cue stop music. You might be thinking that the photo lights beep a lot, but in fact, that's the construction outside. Good, easy. <laughs> At some point during the shoot, the, the subject realizes how crazy the situation is and then begins to laugh. This is basically the nature of, like, this is our life, what are we doing here? There it is, easy as that, a couple more. Really simple, guys. Almost too easy. Almost too easy. <laughs> All right, I think that's pretty good. Actually, let's take a quick peek, make sure everything's still sharp. I think we're pretty good. Um, let's shoot a few without the fill light, just for some more contrast, just because I feel like it. Now, remember, guys, that I turned down both lights down a bit. So I'm actually going to turn the B light off, the fill light. And I'm just going to bring this one back up to two tenths so I get the better exposure. Actually, I'm going to bring it up three tenths. Give us a slightly better exposure. Let's see, get a little. Yeah, there we go. But I like the contrast. Good. Notice how I'm placing her. It's important to always place your subject kind of over to the right a little bit for the thumbnail. It's important because the onset logo goes right in the corner. One more, nice, good. Hold on, just for the people that are gonna write about it in the comments, let me leave a little space above your head because they get mad if I cuff the top of your head. Some verticals, no extra charge for that. And there we go. Nice and simple, space around the outside, easy to use. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look, you can actually do it, and Kane's gonna give her absolute honest opinion. Um, maybe. And but, yes. <laughs> but, but, but the point of this is that she's gonna look and make sure that we're getting the right vibe that she wants. Also, if there's something that she really likes that she wants to shoot more of, if there's something that, well, we can't really can't shoot less of something because it's already been done. But, you know, we'll, we'll, I mean, it might just be like, oh, yeah, we got it. Or it might be like, hey, I like this angle. Let's shoot more like that, whatever. And this is why we're doing this. You want to do it between each look when you're doing a headshot. That's the one, right? Yeah. And if she likes it, she can always mark it if you like to do that. Um, 
You can have them mark it some way so you know later for your editing. You look crazy there. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> That's good though. Yeah, see, <laughs> that's recovering. Could probably use that someday. Yeah, exactly. It's always important to look a little crazy, just not too much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, worried. Worried, yeah. Get different expressions. Different She's, emotions. Yeah. For She's different like, roles. For different roles, exactly. Also, when you have that particular kind of bangs, you want to make sure you line up the bang with the top of the frame always. It's important composition rule. <laughs> it's like, what? No. <laughs> she, likes, she likes the test, the dark test one, of course. I do. Of course she does. Well, we can always save it, maybe. You like that the light was flatter or you like that expression? Um. Yeah. You want you to cut more? You got it. Are you happy with this outfit? I'm happy with this outfit. All right. Awesome. <laughs> and then we'll, do, we'll move on to the next outfit. Now, one technique you might do, depending on, you know, we've worked together a bunch, so I'm just going to give Cadence all these pictures because that's what, but if you want to make sure if you have people that are indecisive, they don't really know, like, oh, I don't know what to do, then what I usually recommend doing is I would come over here and I'll just select all the images and mark them three stars. If anybody watches my Twitch channel and they see how I edit, this is how I do it anyways. And then what I would do is I'd have them come through and I'd say, um, anything that you don't like, uh, mark with, we'll hit the number two. So like we don't like this plain background. And then what will happen is they'll disappear. So like, you know, like that. And then in the end, hopefully when they get through, there's still images left. That's important. <laughs> but if there's not, then that's a discussion to have now while they're sitting here in your studio and not later when they get the images back, right? It's just a good way to do it. I usually try not to say much when they're doing it. I just kind of look over their shoulder because if there's one I really like and they don't, I might have that conversation. I'd be like, really, you don't like that one? This is like the best shot of you. This is exactly your personality. That is. Yeah, and then she might be convinced. <laughs> so that's a little technique there if you guys <laughs> want to do it. So yeah, so you would go through, you know, and just have yeah. them be like, okay, yeah. And, and I like editing this way because I think that it's a little bit easier for people to get rid of the ones that they don't like than it is for them to pick the one they like on the spot when you're looking over their shoulder. You know, the average person. I mean, obviously, Kids is an experienced headshot recipient. She's the recipient of many headshots. <laughs> okay, awesome. All right, guys, so headshots, right? It can be really fun to do. They're super needed by everybody. It's a good business to get into. Just remember to not Make it all about your cool photography technique that you learned about pop and blur and gels and all that kind of crazy stuff. Remember, keep it simple. Should show them at their best, be really easy, very comfortable, and you'll get lots of great shots. So I'll put Cadence's information in the description. You guys can follow her. Be sure to follow me, Daniel Martin Photographer, and I'll see you next time on set. Hey, thanks for checking out our video. If you like this video and you want to see more, make sure you check them out. Also, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell.